it's not a must-win situation for the Pacers, but it's pretty darn close. And these are desperate times. They need to win badly. Show us everything you got, big fella. Bosch on the finish. Bosch again. Chris Bosch from downtown. George throws it down. James on the attack to the rim and a foul. Leads, fires, hits the three. Mama, there goes that man. James coast to coast and throws it down. The Heat have blown this one open. Well, the Miami Heat came out in game four of the Eastern Conference Finals like they were insulted or something. <laughs> uh, like somebody kicked their dog or smeared their reputation. Uh, Bosch came alive early. Miami won a third straight over Indy, and now the Heat will have three tries at reaching a fourth straight NBA final. Meanwhile, the Pacers are showing signs of cracking both on and off the court. Our Rachel Nichols has more. Well, guys, at this stage of the playoffs, the teams that win are often the teams that can keep their focus squarely on the court. Here in the East, the Pacers have struggled with that. Before game four, Lance Stevenson said LeBron James was showing weakness. Well, LeBron then went out Monday and notched a game high 32 points. Stevenson, on the other hand, didn't even score until the second half. And while he later said he didn't have any regrets, Paul George told me otherwise. What lessons did he and the team learn from that? Um, I mean, at this point in the season, you know, we're on the biggest stage. You know, everybody's tuned into what we're doing. Um, he got to be much more aware of, of, you know, what he's saying. You know, if he's going to say that, you know, he's got to bring it. You know, we all know how special of a talent LeBron is. You know, that's, that's bulletin board material. And, uh, and that's a learning and teaching point for Lance. Yet on the podium after the game, George provided some bulletin board material of his own, blaming the officiating for the loss. It's just demoralizing when the game is lopsided. I mean, I'm sorry to say, but uh, that was the case, you know, again. Um, you know, how rare is it we shoot 50%, turn the ball over around 13 or so times, out rebound the team and, you know, and, and lose a ball game. They made 30 free throws. That put them over the edge. You know, maybe this was just home cooking. We did only have five turnovers, seven steals, and uh, 20 points off their turnovers. Um, that has nothing to do with the free throw line. I mean, it just comes with experience. We've never been really a team that gave someone a lot of bu bulletin board material, but um, when we played Boston a lot, they made it more than just about basketball, and they beat us, you know, in the mental game, you know, as well as, you know, the physical game. So I think from that point, we try to leave that alone. You know, we try to beat you at basketball, and we don't go into the back and forth uh, talking um, because that's not, that's not what we're here for, and that's not going to win us a game. What do you know about this Heat team when you guys are up 3-1? How do you guys look at those moments? Uh, we, we look at it as moments to capitalize. Um, you know, it makes us hungrier. We have a chance to, uh, a huge chance to uh, put this team away uh, on Wednesday. After a series-long slump, Chris Bosch was huge himself in Game 4 with 25 points. And he told me that was in part due to the support of his teammates. After Game 3, LeBron and Dwayne Wade had surprised Bosch and some friends at a restaurant. The group just kicked back and had fun, showing Bosch they were all still united. And they'll need Bosch again in Game 5. Chris Birdman Anderson is still hobbled with thigh and leg injuries, and he's questionable for Wednesday. All right, Rachel, thank you very much. Also questionable, Ray Allen, who has a hip injury suffered in the previous game, but he did make the trip to Indy, unlike the Birdman. And it was announced Tuesday, one more little piece of uh, news from the finals. Paul George fined $25,000 by the league for publicly criticizing the officiating. I think it was the home cooking stuff. It might have got him in trouble. That's just, <laughs> that's just me. You know, I wasn't in the meeting. Uh -huh. um, all right, well, I want to get to Miami in a moment, but let's start with what's happening with the Pacers, and a lot is happening. Uh, Greg, here's Lance. He said afterward, I, I, no regrets about making the comment about the weakness comment for LeBron. His teammates probably had some regrets, though, about that. Yes and no. I, I, I Listen, I thought they were foolish comments, but ultimately those comments aren't going to change how LeBron James plays. LeBron, LeBron James trying to win a world championship. And he knows in order to get there, he's going to have to go through the Pacers. To me, when you look at the fact that Lance Stevenson and Roy Hibbert here were non-factors, I look more at their scheme or lack thereof or lack of adjustments. And I love Frank Bowen. I think he's a very good basketball coach. But they did nothing offensively to do to, – to, to, they didn't make any adjustments. They played Norris Cole on Lance Stevenson, in essence, to take away the pick and roll and put a quick guy on him, and they didn't change. They didn't put him on the baseline. They didn't put him in situations where, where he could post up. They didn't do things offensively. 
to make the Heat move. Like the Heat were able to load to the basketball possession after possession. You, you got to make them move. And they didn't do it, and that's why they lost that game. They, to me, it was just the fact that they didn't make the adjustments like OKC made mm -hmm. in game three. They made no adjustments. They played the same game in game three that they played in games one and two. And in games two and, and three, in games two and three, it wasn't good enough. Okay, so if they thought 13 turnovers was a good night for the Pacers, uh, and on those 13 turnovers, the Heat got 20 points. Okay, now let's put those 20 aside, right? And let's talk about the possessions that are left over in this game that the Pacers chose to execute. I saw a lot of high pick and rolls. I saw a lot of predictable actions offensively because now you have two men in a pick and roll and three men standing. And I saw time and time again, five defenders for the Heat set in place, staring at what was going on, ready to contain the basketball. And, and they didn't even need to fly around as they always talk about. They didn't have to fly around because all they had to do was contain. And, and so moving forward, I. I Move ball, move man. They're not moving the ball. No. But you got to move yourself. You can't be – the big, one of the biggest defensive issues is see man, see ball. And if I don't have to see you because all I know you're doing is standing over there, then I can, I can zone in and actually give help to a defender that's actually guarding the ball. I, I, I got to go finer point here. I know we're crushed for time, but Roy Hibbert, a fourth postseason game, Rick, without, without scoring. And he talked about not being utilized in, in the game plan. How, how does this happen? It's, it's Yamahimi was able I, to get five points. I'm not in the locker room, so I can talk about this. I, they're not using him. Not, his teammates aren't using him. The sets aren't using him. So, therefore, you know, this is the last thing they need to be is debating strategy right now. That's not going to help them. But I saw the last six minutes of this game where they actually got an opportunity to attack in transition, flow up the floor, have those guards explore opportunities in the first five, six seconds. Uh, and instead of pulling it back out and waiting and waiting and waiting, and you see, and Roy's got to do better. If he does get two or three opportunities like this, yes, he has to make those go down. He's got to complete those. But the leash is short with him. It's short. It's, it's you know, three, four attempts, and his teammates lose confidence, and they go away from can, him. Can you see this, guys, real quick before we go to break? Can you see this going past the uh, banker's life in the next game? I, I yeah. could see that. Okay. Absolutely. Think about it. If, if Bird doesn't play, there's a chance Ray Allen doesn't play. Yeah. They're going to be a desperate team. I could see them winning that game. I just can't see a scenario where they win the series now because of how things have gone. Get early offense. Push. Don't slow down. Don't set up. That's, that gives the Heat a chance to get back and do what they do best, which is shut you down. But Chris Bosch found his offense, so that's something they'll try to hang their head on again.